People follow you, and sometimes you don't even realize they be following you. And who is that? Anybody in the household, the mother and the father. A mother and the father are the first superheroes of the children. Before they get to that annoying teenage age where they don't listen to you and they're just always on their phone. Before that age, you, mother and father, are their superheroes. Everything you do becomes law. A lot of times when young people come to me after my khutbah and they say that, Imam, what you're saying in the khutbah is wrong. I'm like, bro, you study, man, tell me what you study, man, and teach me. Well, how am I wrong? Like, no, we don't really have Quran and Sunnah or evidence. But our dad doesn't do it the way you do it. And I don't take much back from that besides the concept of the father and the mother being the primary source of religious education, of any form of mora morality. In the household, it's the mother and father. Sometimes you don't realize that the children pick up also on hypocrisy. You know, saying mother and father says, well, these are inappropriate words for you to use, but if they use it themselves, don't speak ill about somebody else, don't talk behind somebody's back, but as soon as they pick up, hear their parents pick up the phone, all the gossip starts, all the tea starts spilling. Drink that tea, don't spill it. Like Brother Multi Mix said, drink the tea, don't spill it. It's kind of corny, but it works, man. Really, just follow your own advice. We will never teach our children to do the wrong thing, right? But really, our actions speak way louder than our words. So by setting this tone, if we start teaching our children like, hey, look, you know what, we have to be very careful with how we speak. Do that not only when they're around, because sometimes they may be around when you're not there and you don't notice. Start by doing that yourself. Pray extra salah, and your children, don't, don't force them to do it. Like if you're praying nafil or taraweeh or tahajjud or something like that, don't force them to do it. But you do it continuously. You know when I was little and I was studying my Adam program, I was still a little boy. Uh, I used to always pray my sunnah after salat al-maghrib, and I also used to pray two rakahs of nafil, right? Because my dad would pray. And one day, I mean, I didn't know, but he had to use the bathroom, so he didn't pray his nothing. He rushed to the bathroom, and I was like, "Where did Daddy ain't praying? So I don't know, praying today too." And I read it. My dad tells me that story till today. He's like, "That day, I made sure I had to, I did whatever I had to do before the salah, so that you don't ever get the wrong idea, right?" So whatever we do, our children are going to follow suit. We have to set an example, not by always lecturing them, but by showing them. May Allah give us the ability to do that. I hope that works.